Hey everyone, welcome back to The Stationery Writer. I'm here today because I'm going to give a little tour of my fountain pen collection. Uh, some people are asking about that. So um, I've been fiddling with microphones for like a week now. Uh, I bought like one or two different ones that were supposed to work with my phone but didn't. Anyway, I'd love if you guys could tell me if this audio is an improvement because um, I finally found one that at least actually records audio with my phone, so hopefully it sounds better. Anyway, so let me know. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. I've got um, my pen tray here. Um, I've actually got, this is something new I just got, is a um, Toyuka Craft uh, pen box. So, um, and then my Yoseka pen roll, which I keep a few pens in as well. And then as a bonus, we're gonna go through um, the two dip pens I like to use as well. So let's get started. Um, I guess I will start with, I think I'll start with the pen roll. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know, this is a Superior Labor pen roll, but it's a special collaboration that Yoseka Stationery did. So they've got their logo on there and it's their like, you know, green color. And then I've actually got um, the little charm that they gave with their pen collection, which we'll get to on here. So um, right now I'm just kind of keeping a, only a couple pens in here just because I've been in limbo with how I'm storing pens that I'm not using. Uh, side note, I never thought I'd be at the point where I was storing unused fountain pens, but here we are. It's a collection. So, <laughs> um, so right now the only things I have in here are um, my Lamy Safari, which is actually like the first fountain pen I ever really used. And I actually wrote like a good bit of my first novel with it. So I don't know. It's just like has a lot of nostalgia for me. Uh, it's kind of what got me into fountain pens. And you know, I, I think Lamy Safari is a really good entry level pen. I would definitely recommend it to anyone just getting started. Um, so, and this is like, it's the pastel blue, I think is what it's called from, I think it was a 2019, 2018 exclusive. Um, so then the other thing I have in here is, this is a Franklin Kristoff, uh, I think they call it Model 45, might have an L in there, I can't remember. Um, yeah, it says 45, it doesn't say L, so, but it's like a pocket size, so <laughs> super cute. Um, and this I actually picked up, um, I went to the Atlanta Pen Show this year. And that was my first pen show ever, and oh my gosh, do I totally recommend if you can go to any pen show, especially if you're just getting into this, it's, I wish I could have gone to one earlier, because to go around and see all the pens in person and hold them and see what you like is so amazing, and it makes such a difference in trying to decide what is actually a good pen for you, um, instead of, you know, ordering things on the internet, trial and error, but, um, so this is what it looks like. And this is actually, um, Franklin Kristoff does, like, they have a custom nib grinder in-house. So I got a needlepoint nib on this one, but again, it's really cool because they have a table with, like, the way Fr Franklin Kristoff does theirs is you can buy all these different, just like, I guess you call it a blank, or like, you can buy the pen bodies and then you can pick which nibs you want and you can swap them out, but they have a table where you can test all their different nib types and their custom grinds and kind of decide which nib you want to get and then you pick which body you want. So, um, I don't know, it's just like a really cool kind of special acquisition for me, I feel like, at the pen show and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's what's in here. And then I kind of had a notebook in case uh, some of these I feel like we'll want to do a little line test so you can see. How they write. Um, so the next one I'll show you is a, this is a Twisby Diamond Mini, and um, this one's kind of special. I have a shimmer ink right, right now in it, so I'm going to shake it a little bit, but um, this one also has a custom nib grind on it from Kirk Spear from Pen Realm, um, and I definitely recommend any of his nib grinds. I've been really happy with all the well, I say all, it's like two more, <laughs> but <laughs> both the grinds I've got from him, I've been happy with. So um, this one is, it was a broad nib and it's ground into a cursive smooth italic. Um, so just clear out some of the glitter, hold on. Yeah, I'm not like super fan of shimmer inks because of this problem, but 
Um, it is fun on a nib like this because you can really see uh, you can really see the variation in the. Uh, I say that, but truly, there we go. So you can see how it kind of has like a wider downstroke and a thinner cross stroke. I think that's how you explain that. And cursive italic grinds are really for people who like to write cursive. Um, so I, I really, I'm a big fan. I actually have, I have another cursive italic grind from him because I just kind of, I do like to write cursive when I journal. And so, um, and it, it's interesting because depending on which nib size you start with and then grind down into it, it'll have, you know, a little bit different effect. So. Um, that's kind of how that looks. All right, so next we have my two Pilot Decimos. So um, Pilot makes a pen, it's called the Vanishing Point, and then they make a Vanishing Point Decimo, which is um, just a little bit slimmer of a body, I believe is how you describe it. Um, and uh, this is literally Vanishing Point, so it's a click fountain pen, which is pretty pretty unique. There's only a handful of this type of pen in the fountain pen world. Um, I think Platinum makes one, and um, I know Jin Hao is kind of making a dupe for it as well, so <clears throat> pretty unique. Um, I'm a super duper fan of these. I've actually um, been using Decimo for a while now. Um, I, I prefer smaller, lighter pens. Uh, thinner pens. I have small hands. Um, so, and then these two happen to be um, Japanese exclusives that I kind of like hunted down once I became a fan <laughs> of Decimos. So this one is called, I believe, Emerald Green. And they did a series called like 20 Colors, I think. And uh, these are really cool because they have this like brushed, brushed finish. Um, hopefully you can see that pretty well. Uh, so, and I was like kind of surprised that it's actually really smooth to the touch, even though it kind of has that textured look. Um, so it's very unique. And then this one I believe is called Soft Mint. Um, and I found like this one I was able to find on Mercari Japan. Um, I used, uh, I think it's called Baiyi, B-U-Y-E. Buy e, which basically you can buy off these Japanese platforms and they'll help you get it. <laughs> um, and it's pretty, like, it's actually more affordable to do that because when you try and buy these special editions off, like, eBay here in the U.S., people are, like, way overcharging for them. So, um, so that was an exciting find. And uh, this one I actually found on, on PenSwap on Reddit, someone was selling. So really good uh place to look for people selling pens. Um, okay, before I get into sailors, I will just show this one. Um, this is a, I believe it's called Platinum Kanazawa, um, but this is like their, it's like a entry level maquille kind of thing. Um, so if you're not familiar with the concept of um, like urushi and makie. It is a Japanese um, way of making pens where they layer lacquer and usually like etch into it and then fill the etchings with gold dust um, to create really just like artwork more than a pen at that point. And they're really beautiful. Um, they're also really expensive. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of a nod to that in a more affordable form factor. Um, I, I think they might use like screen printing to do this, but it is, it has got that same like um, sprinkled dust to make a pattern on your pen kind of thing. Um, and I'm actually, this is a snap cap and I really love this pen because the nib is an 18 karat nib, which has this like really impressive, like soft bounciness to it. It's almost hard to explain, but like, um, you can kind of see the little bit of flex and bounce when you write with this nib and I don't think I have it inked up right now, but 
it does have a little bounce to the nib, so it's it's really pleasant to write with. And because it's a snap cap, I don't know, I I find that it's a good pen to just have as a care like you know a daily carry pen. Whereas I don't know, twist caps are a little more work to get going. <laughs> so um, this is I really enjoy this pen. Um, so I guess we'll move into Sailor's. Uh, Sailor Pro Gear Slim is like kind of my favorite pen. Um, it's it's a small form factor, they're light, I just, from the first time I used one, I just loved how they felt in my hand. Um, again, I have small hands, so that's that's probably one reason why they work for me. Some people find them too small, um, but anyway. So I have a number of sailors in my collection. Um, this one and this one are both from a series called Sound of Rain. Uh, it's part of their like Sailor Shikiori line. Um, so this one is the autumn autumn drizzle. It's like a, a nice purple, and this one is this like summer rain. I think they call it. Um, and this is a medium fine. I think these only come in medium fine. Um, if you're not familiar, medium fine is actually kind of a sailor special thing. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere in between a medium and a fine, and it's actually you know it's really good. It's really good size. I enjoy it. I mean. This is kind of what it looks like, so. Um, and these both have like really pretty, like unique finials. So this one is a little bit of a sparkly blue. This one is like a, almost a sparkly beige. Um, and another thing that's really unique about these is, I think this is a new technique, but the finish of the body is kind of like a matte finish. Um, I believe the technique they use is called, it's like a sandblast to do the finish. Um, so that, you know, just to compare, this is more of the like shiny smooth finish that they typically have. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a really cool, I like the way that that like matte body feels. So those are really cool. And they all like have a matching ink, these Shikiori ones. Um, and those are like, the motif for that is, you know, sound of rain. So the way the rain sounds and feels in the different seasons, that's pretty, pretty beautiful, I feel like. <laughs> um, so the next one is actually not a Pro Gear Slim. I think they call this a 1911 model. Um, but this is, this was like an anniversary edition they did, and I, I also bought this one secondhand because I wasn't like, I didn't pay attention to it at the time because I'd never had one with, um, I don't know, in this body and with like the pointy ends. That's kind of like, I usually go for f like flat ends, but I did kind of like see this one around and I really thought that the clear cap was with like the gold sparkles and it was quite beautiful and kind of the teal and light blue. Um, I'm very into blues. <laughs> blues and teals are kind of like, you know, my favorite colors. So I did pick this one up second hand and it's, um, this one also was like medium fine only, but um, I guess that's another thing I'll talk about is that sailors kind of have this very unique, and maybe people watching this are already like seasoned sailor users, so they know, but sailors are known for having this very subtle like feedback when you write with them. Let's see if we can capture that. And just to compare what the pilot sounds like. So it, it's a very subtle thing, but um, some people really love it, some people don't, personal preference. Uh, I really enjoy it personally. Um, so yeah, let's see what's next. Um, so next is da, 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 my <laughs> uh, these are the Yoseka um, special editions that they've done um, over the past couple years. Uh, so they they basically made a pen for each one of the characters in their. Um, like, I guess Chinese name is the way to describe it. Um, let me see if I have. So like, this is their Yo Sen Jia. That's how you write and say Yo Seka in um, Chinese. And so basically for each one of these characters, they made a pen. So they had 
um, their Yo pen, which is what is on the finial, is their Origin pen. So that is their like Yoseka Green, um, and that was the first one they came out with. And then their Sen pen they called uh, Refresh. So it's this really beautiful blue with the peachy pink finials. Um, and this Sen on the finial. And then <laughs> Controversy Time, the one that <laughs> just came out this year actually, is their home pen with their uh, jaw. I believe I'm saying that correctly, I'm not sure. Um, their home pen, which is has the clear cap and the like creamy coffee colored body. Um, but the big drama with this pen is that Sailor made it wrong. <laughs> it was supposed to have the um, like gold trim, which um, Sailor has three different types of trim, but the like you know yellow gold. This is on this pen is what was supposed to be on this pen. So Sailor makes yellow gold, they make the silver rhodium trim, and they actually make a, um, I guess you would call, uh, people are calling this like champagne gold, but it is a lighter gold. It, it does exist on other pens, um, which we've all learned in this <laughs> process. Um, so the pen, the original pen design was supposed to be the yellow gold trim, and it was supposed to have a two-tone nib, which let me just show you. That is a single. It's all the same color. Let me show you. I, I think this one has the two-tone nib. Uh, yeah, so that one has yellow gold and rhodium. Uh, two different colors. So that's what this pen was supposed to have. Um, Sailor made it wrong and there's been lots of drama about it, but Sailor is apparently going to make it right, um, so ultimately people can either keep the pen as it is with like a, a little bit of a credit since the two-tone nib is, you know, an extra cost in making it, I guess, um, or you can send it back and have it repaired to the original design. Um, so, you know, I think it's pretty cool that they're giving people options because I know a lot of people were just happy with how the pen looked like this. Um, you know, I, I think that ultimately it, it probably kind of sucks for Yoseka to kind of have two versions of this pen out there that they designed, um, but uh, not the end of the world. Um, personally, I'm actually planning to send mine back. I liked the original design with the gold trim and with the two color nib, and you know, I, I'm obviously a Yoseka fan and <laughs> I collect all their stuff and you know, Aside from preferring how the original design looked, I want to have the pen that they wanted in the world, that they designed, so <laughs> I don't know, that's that's my take, but no shade to anyone that's keeping it. I, I don't care either way, but that's my decision. Okay, so those are my, my little Sailor pens, my Sailor Yoseka pens. Um, I'm going to set this aside. We're going to get to that one. Um, I guess I should show the nibs on these because I do have some different ones. Get a fresh page going here. So, I actually have a broad nib in the um, refresh pen, which is pretty unique. I feel like uh, probably want to show how that looks. So, um, I think that the broad nib Sailor actually is writes really well. It's a really good nib. Um, and then I did just get a medium fine in this, but um, when I send it for repair, I'm actually going to switch to a zoom nib because I've never tried a zoom nib from Sailor and it's kind of a unique nib that they make so I'm gonna give that a go. Um, this one I actually got, this is my other custom grind that I was talking about, so this one's a medium nib and I had this one ground to a cursive italic so So yeah, um, you know, again, Kirk Spear from Pen Realm. Uh, I had, actually, when I went to the pen show, that's when I had this done, and uh, really cool experience. Like, you know, I'd never had a custom grind before, and you know, he does it right there. It's it's really cool to watch. But you know, I just I love how it writes. It it's really. I mean, that I would say this is one of my go-to journaling pens because I like to journal in cursive, and it just writes so beautifully. Um, it's really nice. So. So that's those. And then down there, I actually have two more sailors. 
Um, the first one is, um, so this is the Dragon Palace, and this is actually the first sailor I ever got, so, um, and I bought it from Yuseka. <laughs> So a lot of nostalgia here as well, and uh, looks like I did get a medium fine, probably because I was curious. So uh, a lot of writing has been done with this pen, and despite having a lot of special editions, I still really love this pen because uh, this is like my color. I love this minty green color, and I would say there's a there's this like concept to breaking in a pen. Um, it's not inked right now, but um, that I feel like. Maybe all pens are like this, but I feel like sailors are especially like this, which some people I think are salty about because they think a pen should be perfect out of the box. But this isn't a matter of perfection. This is a matter of like loving a pen and using a pen. And the more you use it, the more I feel like, <laughs> this is probably gonna sound crazy, but you and the pen become uh, some kind of pair together and <laughs> become in tune with each other. and. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's just how it feels to write with this pen. It's a it's a pen that's been well loved and uh, writes in sync with me. So, uh, and then the last sailor I have is a Bungu box um, design. It's called um, Magic of Alice. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Magic of Alice. And um, to be honest, I. <laughs> I didn't get this specifically for the Alice in Wonderland motif, but I am a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, and I felt like this screamed Kingdom Hearts more than specifically Alice in Wonderland, because it has the key on the nib, which um, is kind of like a keyblade to me, uh, which is really beautiful. It's focusing. Yeah. And then the finial has this like to me it looks like the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1 when you're in the room with all the stained glass floors that you essentially do your tutorial in but um so I don't know Magic of Alice but for me it's a Kingdom Hearts pen uh, I think it's really beautiful and you know Alice in Wonderland is in Kingdom Hearts so it's not like way out there but um so this is a really cool pen uh Boonga Box so those are all my sailors and you know I'm not really planning to buy any more sailors I think I have more than enough to be honest and I don't know after this whole thing with Yoseka's pen I don't know I just I'm sure I'll knock on wood in a year then maybe they'll come out with something cool but I feel happy with the sailors I have you know I really wanted to support Yoseka and get their last one in the in the trio and have the collection so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, anyway, okay. So the last fountain pen I have is um, kind of a newer uh, acquisition. It's in Esterbrook SD. Um, I think it's called the the pattern. You know, I'm like new to what Esterbrook does, to be honest. And I only bought this for one specific reason, which I'll explain. I think it's called Nouveau Blue. Um, I'm not even like super keen on this like tortoise chip pattern thing uh you know i i don't know it looks like out in the world it looks good to be honest because it's not super like jarring but when you're under bright light i find the like the like chip thing is almost a little too intense but anyway uh i bought this specifically because um it has a very special nib it's um it's called a Techo nib, and it actually says Techo in the Japanese characters. And this nib is made by um, CY from Tokyo Station Pens. And I, you know, I've never, he, he does a lot of like custom nib grinds, um, and he's really well known in the community. I've never been able to get a custom grind from him because he's usually at like SF Pen Show, which, you know, is too far for me, but. Uh, so I was very keen to try this out and basically the concept of this nib is that you can make a bunch of different line variations um, depending on the angle you hold it so uh, like a really low angle is going to be a very thick line and then as you increase the angle the lines are going to get thinner 
And then lastly, you can actually flip it over <laughs> and write um, with it flipped over with a very fine line like this. So you can pretty much go from broad to extra fine with one nib, which is like crazy, crazy cool. Um, so uh, I think this is a really fun, really cool pen, super duper enjoy, you know, writing with it. I, I mean, I think the big appeal is that you can go from, you know, writing tiny in your Hobonichi, Hobonichi weeks, but you can flip over to your traveler's notebook and make a big heading and then start writing in a more normal size. I don't know. So very cool. So yeah, that is Esther Brooke with a touch on it. So yeah, um, that is my fountain pen collection. And I thought I would just finish off by uh, showing two of the dip pens I use. I get a lot of questions about um, this one in particular. Um, so this is a Kakimori nib. Um, it's a brass nib that they make. And this is just, um, I never take it out, but here we go. Let's see if it'll pop out. This is just a, like a nib holder. You can get a lot of different kinds of these. Um, mostly this is the... The thing you want from them. Um, so it's like a brass nib and it has all these little slits to hold ink, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but this actually has the the same concept as the Esther book we were just talking about where you can hold it at different angles and get different line variations. Um, and so this is like really good for swatching inks, I feel like. Um, so. The way I usually swatch inks is kind of like, I try to get, kind of like show what it looks like in a broad versus fine, um, but you can also get like a good wash with it as well. Um, so I, I think this is a really good, I feel like if you only got one dip pen ever, it would probably be this one because it just can do so much and you know for the people that like to actually use a dip pen to maybe write a small amount maybe if you're just writing a letter or you just want to use a specific color in a small area or you want to make headers um, this is the one to do it with because these the ridges will hold enough ink that you can actually do a good bit of writing um, so so yeah dip pen you just dip and again, I, I love how you can take a very wide angle and get a good wash with the ink. Um, then you can have that line variation all the way up to like a very um, fine line, I feel like. Um, cool little nib. Definitely recommend this. <coughs> and then I didn't prepare myself very well for this, but I have one other dip pen that I'll talk about. And let's see. Um, so this is called the Sailor Hokuro dip pen, and this is just, it's another, um, it's, you've got the same concept where you just have a body and you can buy different nibs to pop into the body. Um, so I have two, um, and they're so cute. They have the little heart <laughs> on the feed, which I think is just adorable. Um, and one thing I do like about this versus the Kakimori is that you can, uh, tuck the nib inside. Uh, so I feel like these are really good for, um, you know, if you're going to like a meetup and you're going to swatch inks, this is a good one to be able to tuck in your bag, not worry about damaging the nib. Um, but so this one, I have two different nibs right now. This one is a fine nib, which like I said, when I'm swatching inks, I like to get a really good idea of how the ink will look in a finer nib. So that's kind of the benefit of having this one. So, I have that one. And then I have this one, which is really cool. It's called a Fude nib. Um, so, 
so it's actually kind of upturned at the end, which is, I guess, what a Fude nib is. Um, but I think this is kind of more of a calligraphy style nib. Um, but this one you can also get a little feed to attach. Not sure how easy it is to show that, but basically that just lets you hold a little more ink because the Fude nib is going to write, uh, use a lot more ink, write a bit more broadly, so if you add the feed you can get a little more out of it. But I'll show you what that looks like. So yeah, that's kind of what it looks like to write with. Um, there's probably much more seasoned calligraphy people out there that can talk about what to do with that nib than me, but it is a fun thing to experiment with and they're, you know, pretty affordable. So if you just want to play around with calligraphy or you're just getting into it, um, I think a, a Sailor Hokuro with a Fude nib is going to be a pretty good option. So um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for tuning in for a little uh, tour of all my fountain pens and I uh, really hope you enjoyed this video um, if you have any questions or maybe something I didn't show that you're curious about uh, just drop it in the comments and again let me know if the audio is better as well so see you next time thanks